Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Devon Terrell, and welcome to another Help Me Devon review. And today, in this Help Me Devon review, I'll be showing you guys Waves CR8 Creative Sampler. That's right, I said a sampler plugin from Waves. And I know a lot of you may be saying, another sampler plugin? Do I need this Waves in a sampler? When I mean to tell you that I would not be showing you this thing if I didn't think it was powerful or useful in some way, I am using this sampler now in my actual workflow as far as my production. I think this sampler is, is super simple, but also extremely intelligent in the way it does so many different things, but in such a simple, simple GUI. I'm gonna show you, trust me when I tell you, stay with me on this video, and I promise you, you'll be impressed by what they created with this plugin. Let's get right to it. Okay, so first things first, this is the simplest way I can show you this plugin. As soon as you bring it up, this is the sampler. And it looks like a, a, a sampler. Uh, obviously, it says drop a sample here. You can look at all the knobs and stuff like that, and it's so self-explanatory as far as what happens. You have your pan knobs, you have your tune. Now, what I wanna show you, and what really makes this thing amazing is, let's say, for instance, you're like, okay, I'm ready to load up a sample. And sometimes a lot of us have to go to you know, a certain window or uh, a bunch of different ways that we have to find those samples. This thing, and I'm telling you, has a way that basically I can type in the style of kick I want. I can type in the BPM of the loop I want. I can even choose the, the mood or the feeling or if I want distortion, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So what they have is this awesome feature in here, I'll move this to the side, is Cosmos. This is basically the sample finder for the CR8 Creative Sampler. And what this thing does is, it literally takes your entire sample library, whatever folder you point it to, and it aggregates all that information into one centralized place. And it even tags it with special uh, 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 names and, and features like electronic, is it bright, is it acoustic, is it clean, is it saturated, is it an effect, is it a symbol, all of these different categories that it organizes your sample library into. And guess what? You don't have to do anything. It literally does it itself and it does a really good job of picking the right stuff for what it is. Check this out. So long story short, in its most simplest form, you obviously see this. This is the Cosmos sample finder that I can drag and drop into the plugin. On the left-hand side, you'll notice that it's a little bit brighter. I'm gonna show you this and I'm gonna see if you understand how they organized your, my sample library. So check this out. This is the far left. That's a kick. What you notice is as I went from left to write that it became more high-end information or samples. And to the far left, I was getting more lower-end stuff. So from left to right, it's organizing my sounds from a, uh, from a texture standpoint as far as uh, its frequencies. So on the left-hand side, I have it organized where it's giving me more of my low-end stuff. And on the right-hand side, I have it where it's giving me more of that high-end stuff. Pretty simple. And then even from up to down, there is a method to the madness. So up here, you see that sample and then right down here at the very bottom, it's something very quick and sharp. So basically the higher up it goes, the sample is longer and the lower down, down here it is, the sample is a lot uh, shorter as far as its tail and as far as its information is concerned. This thing is, is super cool. So now what I'll do is, let's say for instance, I just wanna load a kick into my sampler. So let's do that. I like that kick. Let's load this kick into my sampler. So all I gotta do is drag and drop, bang. I'm good, and that is my sample. Now say for instance that you were looking for a sample and basically you were rolling around in the kick side. You were rolling around, so check this out. So let's back up a bit. Let's go over here. Now say for instance that two, two steps ago, I really liked the kick that I had. And of course, within this big cosmos, how can I possibly find that one kick that I had? Well, they have a feature where the last few presets or, or samples that you actually click, you can actually go back to it and cycle right here on the side. So check this out. These are the last couple samples that I clicked around with.
So if you're just clicking around, all that is being recorded into here. And then you'll be able to just basically say, oh, no, no, what was that sample? And you can just go right back to it and say, oh, yep, that was it. And bring that thing over here into the actual, actual sampler. That's a sick feature that you can do with the sample finder. And that really, really impressed me. So something else I'll show you right quick within the actual sample finder is this. Let's say, for instance, I just want to see just straight kicks. And this is where you see the one shots. I just want to see straight kicks. I'll click kick. And now I'm only seeing just my kicks in this thing. So basically, you can just honestly dial in exactly what you're looking for as far as the sample. So if you're looking for kicks, type in kicks. It's going to show you all of your kicks in one place. And then you can basically decide, hey, do I want a kick with a longer tail? Do I want a really short sounding kick? Do I want a kick that's boomy? Do I want a brighter kick? And now it's easy to understand that because the way it's organized. So if I say, yo, I want a really high, bright kick, I go closer to the right because I know the right hand side has brighter information. And then the left hand side has darker. And then the top of it has a longer tail. And the bottom side has a shorter tail. Super, super simple. Now, let's say for instance, I'm looking for specific things. Like I want straight up just acoustic uh, kicks. So now I have acoustic highlighted and kick highlighted. So I want just acoustic kicks. Did it do a good job? Let's check. It's, it's nailing it. And the cool thing is, if you look at my sample names, and these are my personal samples, you'll see it. It's not like it's labeled, oh, acoustic. It literally just analyzes the sonic characteristics of the actual sample and categorizes it. And that's honestly what makes my life, it, my life is about to get so much easier because now I can literally just say, what am I looking for? And I can type that in. If I'm looking for a bright clap, I can type clap in bright and I'm going to find it. Super amazing, super, super sick. Okay, now that I've showed you about all of the Cosmo stuff, let me just show you some more features as far as the actual creative uh, sampler uh, in the actual plugin. So I'm gonna click all this stuff off and I'm gonna show you a different view within the Cosmos. So I'll go over here to this view and this view is kind of like just more of a breakdown. It kind of shows you your, sa your sounds and sample library in more of a, a list form. But the cool thing about it is, what I can do is uh, it also gives you the information as far as how many bars it is, as far as the sample is concerned. What's the BPM of it? It organizes all of this stuff. It's, it's like creating that, that mess that you had and simplifying it for you. It's, I'm in love with this. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. And I know I'm definitely like pretty much using this in my workflow from now on. So here's my list view, right? And let's say, for instance, I'm looking for a loop. I'll click loop. And let's say I'm looking for more of a lo-fi loop. So I'll click lo-fi, and this is giving me all the quote unquote lo-fi loops in my personal sample library. So I'll run through some of them a little bit. Super sick. Uh, what I can also do is I can literally go over here to uh, specify what key I want, uh, what uh, BPM I want it in. That's pretty sick. I can even choose instrument wise. Hey, I just want guitar lo-fi loops. I can be very specific with what I'm actually looking for. For instance, let's try this. Let's click drums. Let's get, let's get out of lo-fi. Let's just pick drums and let's pick acoustic drums. Let's say I'm looking for an acoustic drum loop. How can I find that? Let's check it out. And the sick thing about that is I didn't even know I had some of this stuff because obviously there's so much stuff to, to filter through when you're using samples. So it's really hard to kind of uh, hone in on specific things. But now I have it where I can just get really specific with it. I want a bright drum loop that's acoustic. That's this. It's freaking sick. All right. So let's drag and drop uh, one of our drum loops into the actual sampler. So let me find one that I messed with. Cool. So let's drag this right into our sampler. Boom. And if I play this on my actual keyboard, I can play this on my actual keyboard, which let me just enable. I'll put it right here and check this out. Cool. So I played it on my actual keyboard and you can hear it running like it's normal. So check it out. 
Now within this plugin by itself, what I can do is I can turn up the volume, which I will. It automatically turns it to a negative 12, which I appreciate. So it doesn't come through blasting with everything else. So I turned it up a little bit. Dope. What I can do right from the plugin itself is I can increase the width. So let's increase the width of this completely. So let's crank it. Obviously, if I turn it to the left, it's more mono. If I turn it to the right, it's more width. So it's more stereo. So from the left to the right. Super sick. I'm doing that from right inside the plugin. Next thing I'll show you is the speed. And the speed basically just slows the sample down, but still maintains the actual timing because it's actually listening to the host of the program, meaning that your sample is already in time when you bring the thing into the actual program. So let's slow it down. Super sick, it slowed it down right there and then I can speed it up if I wanted to, obvious. And the other cool thing about this is, say for instance this, if you're looking at the sample and you feel like you're getting some type of artifacts or if you don't like the way it's actually uh, uh, time stretching it, there's a feature within here that can give you different characteristics of time stretches to fit uh, what you want it to sound like. So if I go back over here, as you can see, if I click here, you'll see it says harmonic, melodic, voice, classic. You can literally pick what style of time stretching or how it reacts that you want. So even right here, you can see that you have beats, harmonic, Whatever you bring into the actual program, it actually has an idea already, and it kind of tries to pick the best one that suits the sample. So for this, it said beats, which I'm cool with because basically it's a rhythm section, and that's basically what it was. Other things you could do in this plugin, as far as the sampler is, I can even bring the tune down. Obviously, that's gonna bring down the pitch. So let's come back the speed to zero, and let's bring down the actual pitch. And I like it. I don't hear any artifacts or anything weird things with those with that you get with like really cheap samplers and stuff like that of actually getting a, a decent sound as far as when it's time stretching. Uh, something else you could do, which is pretty cool, is you can actually come on over to here, right? And you see this filter section. I can do some sick stuff with this filter section. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you uh, another cool thing that it does as far as layering your sounds, because a lot of us as producers, obviously, you tend to layer your sounds uh, when you're trying to create uh, a really dope sample. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually layer your sounds in this pl plugin as well. And it's super easy and you can fine tune within it really, really easily too. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna press the plus button. Boom, plus button. As you can see, it just created another instance or another side of the actual plugin. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for a percussion loop. Okay, so I'm gonna take this percussion loop and I'm gonna drag it, drop it right into here. Now watch this, I'm gonna play the percussion loop along with the actual loop that we had in here before. Let's turn up the percussion loop a little bit more. Pretty sick, it's perfectly in time, they're layered on top of each other. Now say for instance you say to yourself, hey, I wanna get a little bit of that low end out of the, the percussion loop to make way for the other loop that I have here because they're kinda clashing. You can do that right inside the plugin, let me show you how. So what I'll do is, I'll go right to this filter section right here, I'll click here, and I'll basically look for which filter I'm looking for. So basically I'm looking to cut the lows off. So I'm gonna pick this high pass filter, which is going to cut the lows. So I'm gonna turn this all the way here and you'll see as I solo this and play this sample and turn this up, you'll notice that the low end will start to roll right off. Check this out. Let me get myself prepared and watch this. Dope, so now that I've rolled that stuff off, let's solo it and let's listen to this, what it sounds like together now. A lot cleaner, the stuff is out the way. Now say for instance you wanted to keep doing some funky stuff to this, and let's increase the drive on this loop. Let's check out and see what it sounds like.
So now let's solo it. Let's listen to this like loop all together. So you get the point of what that thing does. Uh, it, it, I have so much functionality within it. I can pitch it down. I can change the speed. I can increase the width. I can change the pan. I can do whatever I want to really fine tune that sample for what it is. I can layer my kicks easily. I can uh, create really, really crazy snares as well. Last things that I'll show you with this plugin and pretty much you're good to go. So the last thing I'll show you is basically you have an ADSR function um, on the actual plugin, which allows you to change the attack and releases of, um, uh, and excuse me, the attack release, the decay and the sustain of the actual uh, sample. So I'm gonna factory reset this whole thing. So basically I'm gonna type in 808. I'm gonna make sure that I'm clicking one shot and then I'm gonna listen. It just found some 808s for me and now I'm gonna see what this 808 sounds like. So 808 one shot, let's see what this sounds like. Cool, so that's my 808 one shot I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna drag that in. And now I can look at my ADSR uh, functions and basically I can change the attack, uh, the, the decay, the sustain or whatever I want. So basically here's the sample for what it is. Cool. So now what I can do is I can take the attack and I can literally just move the attack for what I want it to be. If I want the, the, the sample of the initial attack of the actual 808 to be a little bit softer. So if I move this up. Simple, super simple ADSR typical functions. If I want that release to be a little bit stronger, meaning I want it to cut off as soon as my finger releases, I just make this shorter. And then if I want it to be a little bit smoother, then I could take it out where it kind of holds it for a little bit longer, kind of like the sustain. And it rings out really, really nice. And that's what I like about it. So it's an ADSR function, pretty typical of what you use on most of your plugins. The very, very, very um, last thing, Besides also this unison function, which allows to put kind of like this doubler uh, 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 on the actual sample. Check this out. Without it. It kind of made our 808 uh, pretty stereo sounding. Now be careful, check your phase, of course, but nonetheless, it allows you to do that right inside the plugin, which is pretty, pretty cool. The other thing I'll show you in this plugin is it also has this really dope snap feature, which basically what this does is say, for instance, you have this sample and you just want uh, a specific spot uh, that it starts at. So what it does is you want to make sure that you land on actual transients so that you're hitting uh, a part where it's uh, it, it's it's it's. It'll be right on that grid, and that's important when it comes to actually uh, placing where you put where you want your sample to start because the transient is going to help you to keep things in time. So what this does is if you put it in right here, like it says snap mode to transients, when you move this right here, basically it only lands on transients, which will help you when you're trying to do specific cuts and things of that nature. So say for instance, I want the sample to be right here. I know it's stopping kind of like on some type of transient information. You can then go over to this crop feature and it'll literally make a new sample for you out of what you just did. I think that's a really, really sick thing that it does. The very, very last thing that I show you, and I promise, because there's so many things I can show you with this thing, is I'm gonna show you guys this particular function where it allows you to map your MIDI keyboard or whatever controller you have to specific knobs so that you can actually play the sample, but at the same time, you could do like pitch bends to the kick or, or whatever the vocal sound uh, that you wanna bring in here too, which it does some really sick things for vocals as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find a vocal. So let's find a vocal, right? And what I can do is let's do it in the Cosmos, right? Let's go over to the Cosmos. I'm looking for a one-shot vocal. I'm gonna type in vocal, take out the 808 setting. It's finding a vocal. Let's find a vocal. Come a little, come a little girl. I like that one. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna drag it right into my plugin. Let's factory re-default it so I have fresh, a fresh kind of preset to it. Drop it in, boom, we're good. So, say for instance, I say to myself, uh, well, I, I kinda wanna do like a, a a pitch thing where I want it to drop down and pitch when I mess with my pitch wheel. So what you do is you can come over right over here to this thing that says pitch wheel, it says MIDI, it says PW. You're gonna take this, 
You're going to drop it onto the tune. And now this right here, this knob is now controlled by my pitch wheel on my actual keyboard, which is pretty sick. And you can actually look over here and you can pick how much you want it to vary. So if you only want the pitch bend to control a small uh, amount of the actual parameter, meaning, hey, I only want you to go from like five to six when I pull my pitch in all the way down. Or you can say, yo, I want you, when I pull my pitch in all the way down, I want you to go all the way down with the pitch wheel. Or when I pull it all the way up, I want it to go all the way up with the pitch wheel. So let's say I put it to like a 50%. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the sample, but when I hit the sample, I'm also going to hit the pitch bend and, and move it at the same time and show you. So even when I do it right now, you can see on the plugin that it actually moves as I'm doing the pitch bend. So that's me doing that. So now I'm going to play the sample. And what I want to do is I want to change this to, let's say, harmonic. Let's see what it sounds like on harmonic. Cool. I like how harmonic sounds as far as it uh, doing the time stretching on my um, actual vocal. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the pitch bend. Let's check it out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit loop so that you can just hear it constantly as I'm going. And that is a pretty sick feature that I get to actually have some mapping uh, capabilities as well within the plugin. The other thing it has in here is a modulator, which you can use to your own uh, advantage. And basically, you could take this modulator as a sequencer, LFO tools, and basically, you could take it and map it to actual individual um, uh, faders and knobs on the actual plugin. So, in all honesty, Will I be using this uh, wave sampler? Yes, for someone like me that produces in Pro Tools, uh, it's important for me to have some type of really sick sampler. And I feel like whether you use FL Studio or Logic or Ableton and stuff like that, you can find a use for this, even with the Cosmos function of being able to siphon through all of your actual uh, samples and catalog it for you correctly. I think that's an extremely powerful tool. And then to have a sampler that's, uh, synonymous with it is, I mean, this is something that I am genuinely telling you right now is going to be a part of my workflow uh, for the next however long I'm going to be producing. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. You make your own choices as far as how you like it, but I love this plugin so much. Uh, if you want this plugin, I'll leave a link in the description below. Download it. Um, I highly recommend it. And I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, review of the Waves CR8 Creative Sampler along with the Cosmos. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Remember, one lucky person can win a Audio Nerds t-shirt. If you comment below, one person will win in the comments at myaudionerds.com. Uh, you can also follow us at Help Me Devon on Instagram. Uh, also, make sure that you follow us on our Discord community with a bunch of other aspiring engineers like yourself. And you can visit helpmedevon.com at any time to get some of our templates, vocal chains, and stuff like that to keep this channel going. I hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time, you guys.